When I first saw it on the stand at the motor show, I have to say I thought it looked rather big. And when the journalists from the magazines first got their hands on it, they thought it was much bigger than the old one. Now, Jason, who recently tried one in Italy, assures me that it is actually small. But I wasn't convinced. And it's only actually when you see one for real that you realise it is small. And now, with this new Mini 1, we have the basic model for a small budget. You see, all we've seen to date has been the Mini Cooper, with all the sporty extras you'd expect on it. But now they've let us get our hands on the Mini 1, the cheapest Mini you can buy at £10,300. Or at least it would be if the press department hadn't added £2,000 worth of extras, making it a £12,000 Mini. And even at ten grand, it's hardly the people's car the original one was. But then someone has already grabbed that market with a cute little number starting at just under 7,000. Yes, it's the Ford Ka. When it was launched five years ago, the public wasn't ready for its looks. Sales were slow, just like they were with the original Mini back in 59. But sales have grown and grown, and now the Ka is the top seller in this market. And it's much more faithful to the original Mini than BMW's effort. A radical, cutting-edge design and at an affordable price. Even this top-of-the-range luxury model is cheaper than the Mini 1, and it would be hard to find a small car that's better to drive. Easy to handle and fun with it, the car is hard to beat. So, what's the Mini got that's going to tempt you to pay at least an extra £740 to leave this luxury? Well, it's got that badge for starters, and the kudos have been made by BMW. Let's face it, nowadays, image is very important. Then, with 90 bhp, there's the little matter of an extra 39 horsepower, which will take you to 62, nearly three and a half seconds quicker. And there are four airbags, ABS, electronic brake force distribution and corner braking control, all as standard. But the best is still to come. You can now buy a five-year or 50,000-mile service pack, including all parts and labour, for just £100. Now, that's incredible. Also incredible is the interior of the car. OK, the rev counter and this silver trim are part of that extras package. But it's still got a fantastic design layout. I simply love this huge speedo. In fact, I actually find the rev counter rather detracts from the impact that speedo makes. I'd rather not have it. I also love this little row of old-fashioned toggle switches. They're brilliant. The quality is there. It feels solidly built. In fact, it feels like you're in a much bigger car. It feels like a BMW. The drive is good as well. Despite this being BMW's first ever front-wheel drive design, it corners flatter than the car. It has less roll in it. The steering is slightly dead in the straight-ahead position, but very quick as soon as you start turning it. It's definitely got some of that old mini feel about it. In fact, I desperately want to get out of the town and into the countryside, but that's for another day. No white roof and no chrome grille like the Cooper, but I actually think the Mini 1 looks a classier act, although you can only get it in red, black or yellow unless you want to pay extra. And, by the way, the Mini doesn't have a spare tyre. Not a major oversight, more a cutting-edge feature. Instead, the Mini is the first car in its class to feature tyre pressure sensors to warn you if you're getting a flat. And, to get you out of trouble, it's got a mini mobility system. Puncture repair kit to you and me. 
So, if the Mini has moved away from its roots and gone upmarket, if it's left the cut to provide the basics, what must it beat in the battle for the high ground? Well, in the posh circles where the new Mini now obviously wants to mix, labels are everything. And it'll have to beat cars like this. The Volkswagen Lupo 1.4 Sport. It's got the style, it's got the image and the build quality. And it's £140 cheaper than the Mini. It's got more power too. So what are its weaknesses? Well, the Lupo's interior has got a quality feel to it. But for attention to detail and flair, the Mini's got it beaten wherever you look. It's all far too conservative. And the long-armed, short-legged driving position means you won't be as comfortable as you are in the Mini, but there is a bit more room in the back. Overall, the VW is a lot more grown up. There's none of the retro fun you get in the Mini. As a driving experience, the Lupo handles very well, but the steering isn't as sharp as the Mini's and the gear change decidedly sloppy. So the Lupo loses out in almost all respects. The Mini may have left the low ground to the car, but it's had no problems moving up market. No, if you can afford it, the Mini 1 really is excellent value for money. It's cute, it handles well, it goes well, it's well built, and it's relatively safe if you crash it. It really is this year's must-have small car.